Hello, everyone. My name is Wilson Toe, and I head the Worldwide Healthcare Life Sciences Business Development Efforts here at AWS. Today, I'll be talking a little bit about accelerating innovation across the broader healthcare and life sciences industry. As many of y'all know, AWS provides foundational services to healthcare and life sciences organizations all around the world. We couple our pace of innovation with a comprehensive portfolio of different services to help address some of the undifferentiated heavy lifting that healthcare organizations are looking to use in order to innovate and really think about ways in which they're able to differentiate their experiences for the healthcare organizations and patients and customers on the member side that they serve. We couple this technology investment with a breadth and depth in um, life sciences and healthcare expertise across the board. In fact, we've had a healthcare and life sciences practice that spans across seven years that dedicate our time and effort um, matching our technical competencies with some of the domain competencies from individuals that come from backgrounds such as chief medical officers to chief digital officers of healthcare organizations to those on the pharmaceutical side, really driving some of the bioinformatics and broader life sciences R&D research across the board. And when you think about the work of combining not only the technology investment, but couple that with the expertise and industry knowledge from these teams, AWS is a trusted partner um, for the global healthcare and life sciences industry. As we think about all the different types of solutions that we're able to work with our customers and partner on, it really does span across those that want to build on top of AWS to those that even want to buy on, on top of AWS. And so from the native services that we help bring to market, such as storage solutions or compute solutions, and the rigors behind our HIPAA eligibility program and high trust compliance programs, you know, we help provide the building blocks for organizations to think about what are the types of solutions that they want to build in the cloud. We also have purpose-built healthcare-specific AWS services, such as Amazon Health Lake, Amazon Transcribe Medical, Amazon Comprehend Medical, that really bring the, to, to date the domain understanding and nuances related to the industry as it couples to technology. Across the board, we also have AWS solutions and quick starts that help organizations really rethink ways in which they're able to look at their electronic health records in the cloud on AWS, for example, or find ways of driving down uh, solution areas such as telehealth and telemedicine to support various use cases across um, their healthcare and life sciences practices. For those that are looking to buy solutions, we have our AWS professional services organizations and a strong network of um, healthcare and life sciences partners to which they're able to build with. So it ranges from things like advisory programs to migration programs, or even turnkey solutions, such as those offered by some of our uh, APN partners. So whether they are Philips Healthcare to GE Healthcare, Change, healthcare, and even Cerner. Across the board, wherever you are across this continuum, whether you want to build or buy, AWS has a number of solutions available for you to get started. And that's why we've seen a number of healthcare organizations and life sciences organizations really come to AWS as a trusted partner for these types of solutions. You know, Amazon was named one of the most innovative and potentially disruptive in healthcare with customers and partners working together to truly drive transformation across the industry. When we think about all that's done across 2020, in light of the pandemic, we've seen organizations really build on top of AWS to help meet the demands that they were facing with their patients, their members um, across the board. And in order to do so, they were not only looking to scale out a lot of their programs to help meet their community needs, but really find a way to innovate within themselves to either modernize their entire portfolio and drive a transformation across their own organizations or extend out into the populations that they serve. And despite all of these headlines, you know, it really is day one for the healthcare and life sciences industry. And with that, we continue to invent on behalf of our customers here. And so, as I mentioned, there are a number of purpose-built healthcare and life sciences specific types of services like Comprehend Medical, where we're looking at natural language processing in order to help not only move unstructured text to a structured format, but also extending that into uh, mapping to standard uh, healthcare ontologies such as ICD-10 or RxNorm. Across various modalities, whether it's um, on the uh, text side or even on the speech side, we've introduced new services like Transcribe Medical to help with that speech-to-text speech service within the healthcare context. 
Throughout 2020, we've introduced a number of solutions that help organizations meet the needs for some of the uh, inbound and emerging types of trends that are out there, from looking at um, deploying serverless fire API capabilities with fireworks on AWS, to understanding how to standardize research environments so they can accelerate some of the ongoing R&D efforts that they have using Service Workbench on AWS. At reInvent 2020, we introduced and announced Amazon Health Lake for customers and partners to be able to store, tag, and query, and analyze fire data at petabyte scale. And when you take a step back and look at all the things that are happening across the healthcare and life sciences practice, there are three core areas where we've made significant investments into to better help work backwards from our customers and also invent on their behalf. Data liquidity is one of them. And as you think about movement of data into the cloud, organizations are looking to see what they can do with that data and actually transform that into a strategic asset to derive advanced insights across their members and populations. From there, they're also using that data to really rethink what that health consumer personalization aspect of that journey is going to look and feel like. And it really does beg the needle of um, underpinning all of this that's happening. How are we reimagining the healthcare consumer experience? And underpinning all of that is the security and compliance that organizations are looking to AWS to help support them in moving forward. Because at the end of the day, when you consider all that's happening um, in terms of our innovation, security remains job zero for us. And that's why organizations like Cerner, Moderna, Philips, and GE Healthcare trust AWS with their security and compliance needs. So as you take a step back and look across each of the pillars that I mentioned, there's certainly a, a lot that's happening within the space. When I describe and define some of the work that I mentioned earlier around um, providing data liquidity across the industry in the, in the healthcare and life sciences space, we've introduced new services that help democratize data as it's moving into the cloud. You know, the vast majority of data that's out there in the healthcare setting is unstructured and it's untapped insights that can be used to improve healthcare outcomes across the board. So we've de decided and launched new services like Am Amazon Comprehend Medical to help add structure to clinical notes, clinical documents as they're moving into the cloud. That way you're able to move them into a structured format. But that also applies to various modalities of data as well, also in unstructured form. So whether it's uh, medical records that are faxed or emailed around, how do we use services like Amazon TextTrack in order to not only um, process that, but actually understand what's going on within that document itself. And that also applies to speech sessions. So whether it's clinical call centers or telehealth sessions, how do you derive and transform conversations into insights to drive proactive and preventative care? And what better way to describe some of the work that we're doing across that data interoperability and data liquidity efforts than some of the work that we're doing with Change Healthcare. You know, Change Healthcare announced that they are enabling free health data interoperability services for all Americans through AWS, supporting everything from record locator services to identity management and document retrieval, all within the context and protection of patient privacy. You know, by eliminating the cost prohibitive barriers that generally um, are hampering open interoperability, it's going to help um, accelerate some of the work that we're doing across the broader healthcare data exchange. And when you think about and look across the work that common, the Commonwealth Health Alliance has already supported across the healthcare industry, you know, it already connects over 13,000 provider sites across the US and it already contains more than 50 million unique uh, individuals within the system today. As we think about how um, the crux of interoperability is gonna help um, drive data liquidity in the system. You know, it's it's going to require the scalability and elasticity that AWS is able to bring to the table to make that not only cost effective, but also scalable in means of connecting the dots across the board. And with that, Commonwealth has already received over 1 billion health records. And it goes to show what the cloud technology can do to help support data liquidity in the industry. Another example is some of the work that we've seen and uh, have partnered with with Anthem. Um, not only are they already receiving and sending millions of claims records from providers all over the US, but to be able to process that and move away from a manual and time consuming process using services like Amazon TextTrack to automate all of that helps enable a much more accurate approach and much more streamlined approach for how they're looking at processing data. 
And by leveraging some of the machine learning services that are available on AWS, not only are they able to look at providing quick, quicker and better results, but also how that applies to how individuals are looking to um, um, get access to care all around the world. With some of the work that we've been seeing across the life sciences side, you know, I'm proud to announce and see um, showcase some of the work that we were doing with AstraZeneca and the Center for Genomics Research, implementing a company-wide genomics initiative, um, really looking at combining the genomics data as well as clinical data to better understand what is happening to help support a broader, bold ambition that they have to analyze up to 2 million genomes by 2026. As you can probably imagine, everything from um, the scalability of sequencing the data and storing the data, but also querying that data up, up for those 2 million genomes is going to be a techni technical um, uh, area where they're gonna need to solve for. And that's where AWS has partnered with them to help su uh, support this effort. And with that, up upwards to 500,000 genomes will be sequenced from some of the genomic samples that uh, are collected from a number of the AstraZeneca clinical trials today. And so as we think about all the work that's happening from moving data into the cloud and driving data liquidity, as I mentioned, data is becoming a much more strategic asset for these organizations across healthcare and life sciences um, um, sectors. And as we think about applying advanced insights across all of these, one of the things that AWS has um, brought to market has been the notion of various machine learning as well as AI services that really puts these tools into the hands of developers all around the world. So whether you want to work uh, within the machine learning infrastructure and understand which libraries to deploy in, into creating new models or looking at platforms that simplify the experience for um, not only looking at model development, uh, but also some of the managed services on the AI services side that help create an API that you can point to to process your data. All these are really towards simplifying what the experience is for machine learning and data science activities happening all around the world. An example of that is some of the work that we, we did with the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and the work that they used to really apply machine learning and data science to optimize scheduling, for example, across 41 different operating rooms and align those schedules to improve patient flow within the inpatient setting. As you can probably imagine, with any sort of rescheduling that takes place, not only is that a, det a detriment to um, patient care and patient outcomes, but it can also be very costly for a number of these organizations. And so they conducted a machine learning exercise last year using Amazon SageMaker and Amazon Comprehend Medical to comb through unstructured medical notes within their EHR to better predict whether patients would no-show for some of these appointments. So not only were they able to um, examine the rescheduling patterns that were happening, but they were able, actually able to reduce that um, by about 18% across their, their operating rooms. From there, they've actually expanded a, a, a number of their machine learning ex and data science exercises to actually look across and within each of the operating room procedures to, actually, uh, to examine and use some of the services to um, detect whether or not uh, there are elements within the entire um, operating room procedure form and a workflow there to understand whether their consent pieces related to that operating procedure were in fact present. And if so, then the uh, operation and procedure can go forward. If not, it would alert the clinical staff that some intention need needed to be had in order to prevent any sort of rescheduling to happen. And when you take a step back and understand some of the patterns that they're doing with um, that data science uh, activity and initiative, now they're able to think about and work through new ways in which they're able to engage with the patient population base and find ways of actually addressing some of those no-shows and those rescheduling e efforts. And, at the, and more broadly, as they look across the entire health system, they're able to address some of the needs that they have in order to improve outcomes while reducing some of the costs that they have organizationally. As we think about the broader um, uh, efforts across healthcare operations, um, alongside some of the clinical impacts that they have um, within the clinical uh, workflow. Uh, Cerner, for example, has announced some of the work that they've done on AWS to support their command center, which is a combination of understanding how to combine people, process, and technology into a single space to execute not only some of the collaborative decision-making that takes place, but also understand to what degree some of the workflows that are impacted to help improve over the overall patient throughput uh, in order to address some of the patient outcome efforts that they have 
uh, for patient safety and quality, but also doing that in a cost-effective manner. And we also have medical device manufacturers and medical device organizations like Butterfly, um, which introduced their, the, uh, one of the first handheld whole body ultrasound systems. Um, and a lot of that is built on AWS on the back end. You know, they reinvented ultrasound from the ground up and offering uh, the application of artificial intelligence to actually uh, drive a much more intuitive ultrasound experience for their users. So not only are they able to uh, use AI to simplify device operations, but they were able to use it to also improve image interpretation as well as uh, consistent lesion and measurement for any sort of analysis that's happening using the device itself. And it really does come into play when you're able to couple and enhance some of the current existing workflows, but also enhancing that user and clinician experience as they're using devices, both in and outside the hospital setting. Lastly, some of the work that we've done with Novartis, for example, in working across the entire pharma value chain is really bringing to light some of the innovative therapies to patients faster. And it really starts with not just um, manufacturing, but also rethinking what a smarter procurement in their supply chain is gonna look like. And so some of the work that we announced not only helps um, address some of the factory footprint issues that Novartis um, is looking to strategically um, address, but also finding ways in which they're able to gain real-time visibility into some of the manufacturing KPIs that are important to them. And with that, they're supporting a broader manufacturing transparency effort that enables not only faster production um, and the decisions, decision-making related to that, but also as you take a step back and understand how machine learning can be applied to um, reduce the cost of supplies that uh, Novartis is purchasing across not only the laboratories, but also their factories, they're able to see a just-in-time model across their manufacturing processes that support a broader supply chain effort in, in innovation, innovation activities. So a lot's going on within understanding how data is becoming much, much more of a strategic asset. But where we see a, a huge lift in how data is applied to personalize the healthcare experience, um, across both patients and members is really understanding how it's impacting the personalization of the consumer health journey. And so as we think about some of the work that um, organizations are deploying today, it's really understanding how do, how do we get personal? And when you think about some of the work that breastcancer.org, for example, is doing, they're, they're building empathy and realizing that um, within the, um, the customers that they work with, Customer, cancer is a, it's a terrifying diagnosis. And for many, that can be a very overwhelming and impersonal experience trying to navigate all the content and literature that's out there. And so they worked with AWS to build a digital solution to better inform patient decision-making based off of those hard to understand pathology reports. And now individuals can upload those reports and actually help provide um, uh, not only clarity in terms of what that report means, but also personalize their experience as they're navigating um, any of the content that's on breastcancer.org. So that personalization of that experience based on that individual's laboratory report, uh, laboratory report is, a, is a vast difference in terms of how you're personalizing that experience. And so it's not only providing education materials that are geared towards that individual's um, um, data, but also finding ways in which they're able to engage as well as empower themselves to take ownership of their health. It's an incredible, incredibly powerful story about how technology and machine learning can really help improve and personalize that experience for individuals going through a very difficult time in their lives. As you think about consumerization as it applies to providing access to care, you know, we've helped support customers with tools built using Amazon Chime SDK that powers telehealth solutions all around the world. And so when you think about access to care and on-demand care uh, within virtual settings, we have organizations like Philips and Cerner and even MedStar Health, for example, building on top of AWS to provide access to individuals um, who might be sheltering in place, especially during the pandemic, and finding new ways of extending a number of their service lines to help address the needs for the communities and populations that they serve. When you think about the broader patient engagement and personalization of the experience, it really does go both inbounds and outbounds in terms of um, how we are addressing some of the community needs. Um, during the uh, height of the pandemic last year, for example, we worked very closely with the University of Washington Medicine to create a virtual assistance to help triage all the inbound requests that 
folks that were worried and well, all the way through to those that were symptomatic and sickly, help address and get educated and get the information they need to be safe. And so they leveraged tools and services like Amazon Lex, as well as AWS Lambda, um, and coupled that with the clinical protocols from UW Medicine in order to find a way to seamlessly integrate that uh, uh, triage chatbot into not only their clinical call centers, but also their website. That way, regardless of where the individual was, regardless of what time of day it was, um, individuals within the community here had access to information that they needed to stay safe. And it really does start thinking about how we're connecting the dots for a broader population effort in order to help address the needs of the pandemic. Because as you can probably imagine, there's a number of them calling in, especially during um, the height of the pandemic. And it was um, helping address some of the capacity issues that both from a physical and digital perspective, the University of Washington Medicine was able to, to deploy and scale out in order to address some of the population health needs there. But it, like I said, it's not always going to be inbound engagements that we're, we're focused on. Um, in a number of cases within the community, outbound engagement is important in order to help address some of the needs that um, within the patient population, folks might not have access to the level of care or support that they need to be able to effectively shelter in place. And so we worked very closely with an organization over in New York, Metro Plus, uh, Metro Plus Health Plan, um, in order to not only stratify the population to understand what were the those that were going to be most at risk during this time? But they used some of the tools to identify about 85,000 at-risk individuals that were either you know comorbid with heart and lung disease or those that were immunocompromised who would require additional support as they sheltered in place. And with that, they were able to send out about 10,000 uh, SMS messages to inquire, you know, as you are doing this, how can we help support you as you are looking at your health and wellness goals? And they were able to send out those messages and really start connecting them with um, uh, access to COVID hotlines, the pharmacy, uh, emotional support and mental health uh, hotlines, as well as telehealth sessions. So across the board, um, you're able to not only address some of the social needs that these individuals had, but also some of the health related needs. And they were able to see about a 9% engagement across those that they reached out to. And about 50% of those actually asked for support. Um, both on the social and clinical side to help address what they were doing as they were sheltering in place safely and effectively. As powerful tools like that, as we think about what engagement means and how technology can be used to scale a lot of that engagement, that is incredibly important for us to think about the broader population health um, uh, agenda that we have across healthcare and life sciences. You know, as we think about the technology as it's applied to the broader pop pop health space, you know, it also applies to, you know, me as an individual and how personalization of medicine can also um, not only benefit from it, but streamline some of the work that we're doing to advance in this space. So one of the initiatives that stands out is AWS's work with GRAIL, a life sciences organization that aims to develop blood tests to detect cancer early. And so through a simple blood draw, Grail can detect more than 50 different types of cancer with a false positive rate of less than 1% and identify where in the body that cancer is located with over 90% accuracy. As you think about all the uh, technology that's underpinning that, whether it's from next, next generation sequencing and understanding how to store and scale that to population scale clinical trials and clinical studies to help support evidence-based medicine, um, but also the, the genomic analysis that's needed in order to co combine not only the compute, but the machine learning that's built on AWS to broadly address what personalization of medicine means for individuals across the population. It's an exciting effort that really showcases how data can be a truly transformative effort as we look at precision medicine at scale. So as you think about all the stuff that we just discussed, from the culture of innovation for AWS, coupled with the breadth and depth of industry expertise that um, AWS has brought to the table across healthcare and life sciences, to even the comprehensive portfolio of services that's applied to healthcare and life sciences industries. It really is transformative to understand how data is not only moving to the cloud, but how it's becoming a much more of an anchoring point for how pre precision medicine and personalization of medicine uh, is happening, not only for individuals, but populations around the world. And so as we consider 
um, all the work that's been done today, as I, me as I mentioned, it really is still day one here at AWS for all the work that we're doing. And so I'm looking forward to continuing the dialogue that we have together and engaging with you throughout the entire year to continue advancing and transforming the healthcare and life sciences industry. So if you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to um, take out your phones and scan this QR code and get some more information about some of the work that we've been doing across these industries, because it really is going to be a, a network of uh, different organizations that's going to transform this, this vertical. And with that, I appreciate you taking the time today to learn a little bit more about some of the work that we've been doing across um, our healthcare, life sciences, and genomics efforts, and looking forward to continue engaging um, throughout 2021 and beyond. One of the things I'd like to ask you is complete the survey that uh, is related to the session. We love hearing feedback and we love hearing from our customers. So please take a, take a moment to um, fill out the survey responses and uh, we'll continue, to continue the dialogue moving forward. Thank you so much.